be to try making the background of the slide dark next time. Maybe that would make a difference instead of bright white. Ah, yeah. I used to do that before, and the words used to pop a little bit more. Okay, well, we'll try that for next week. We'll try that for next week. Okay, and we're live. I was also thinking of moving that to the middle so that people were sitting around. That's how the Baptists do it, just to see. Change things around, see if, it, see if they're better. Okay, uh, so with the tracks, we're waiting for... The guy to get back to us, right? Fantastic. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, where's birthday girl? Is she still in there? Okay. Uh, let's pray. Kalimera. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church. We thank you that, for the strength. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your son who covered our sins and paid the price for us. May we live our lives for his glory and not our own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, the title of the sermon today is Make the Greatest Comeback. And you'll understand why I called it that. You see, what happens is we tend to focus on the punishment that we want for certain people that have wronged us. Morning, brother. Wow, everyone made it. It was raining. I thought it'd be empty church and everyone's here. Okay. So, you'll see the letter to Philemon. Well, we don't hear about this Philemon a lot. It's one chapter of the Bible, but you never see it in any churches because it's very short. One chapter only. Okay. So, what does Paul say? which in time past was to the unprofitable. He was a worthless guy. This guy was worthless in the past. But now, profitable to thee and to me. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou should receive him forever. What, do, what happens here? Well, uh, can we turn off the fan? It's actually cold. I couldn't believe it. It's actually cold. Okay. So, people in our lives, maybe they fall away from God for a reason, for a season, so that we receive them forever. Some people fall by the wayside. Some people have spent 30 years of their life wasting. And one year of repentance. But what if someone spends 30 years in, in uh, trying to be a Christian, but then falls away at the end, like Solomon? Solomon's got so much glory in the Bible mentioned everywhere, but died in disgrace. It's a terrible thing. Yes, his words live on while he was wise. So who is worth more? The guy who repents at the end, yeah, okay, well, you guessed it. The guy who repents at the end is worth more. So let's go to the next slide. Oh, yes, you've given me the clicker. Thank you. Right. So Paul carries on about this person who has now come to God. He's turned his life around. He's now come to God. Now this guy is worth something. Yet for what? Love's sake, I rather beseech you. Being such a one as Paul the aged. Paul was getting old. What was happening while he was getting old? The wisdom was growing and growing. There's something that can't replace that when you get older. Some people go, I wish I was young again. Would you have known everything you know now when you was young? I wish. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Give me today's wisdom 20 years ago. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Why? He's beseeching this guy to take this guy back into the fold. This guy has changed Onesimus. He's changed his ways. Now he's worth something. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, who I have begotten in my bonds. Now this happens. Sometimes people get on in life. Uh, we've got that guy who comes to the church sometimes, and he says to me, 
uh, his, his children just, uh, you know, the mum turns, they get divorced, and the mum turns the children against the father, you know, stuff like that. It happens. It does happen. Okay? But here's the thing. He sees other people as his sons now. Does this happen? Yes. I remember my grandfather, he just stopped calling me, like, grandson or anything. He started calling me son, Yemu. He just, he saw me as his son. This happens when you get older. You see people as your son. They treat you like a son. Let me tell you, your parents, because some people say, oh, that guy's adopted. And? Let me tell you about adopted parents. Jesus was adopted, A, number one. And secondly, they love that child more than the child. Because uh, some people, how can I say, they don't love it more than a real one. They love it as much as a normal mother because they were desperate for that child. We know people that pay money to have the deliveries, be in the waiting areas and stuff like that, and, and take the child then, okay? Your mother and father are the people that look after you, and that's how it is in life. So if someone's adopted, good on them. That means they had loving parents, hopefully. So let's go to the next one. Okay, so he says the same thing again to him, okay? This guy has come back. So we go to the next one. If he's wronged me or owes you anything, put that on mine account. Now, who else has said that? Jesus. Paul is acting like a real Christian here. Okay? I will take, what did Jesus do? I will take what you owe someone and I'll pay it. Okay, I'll make good on that. And it's a, it's, not, it's a promise from God. Okay, sometimes you might have wronged someone in your life. You're thinking, I wish, I wish I could meet that person again and just say sorry. I wish I could meet that person again and make it up to them. God will take that there. You worry about repenting. Don't spend sleepless nights worrying about the things you've done. Don't let Satan make you feel guilty about all your mistakes. Because that's what Satan wants. He wants you depressed. He wants you feeling bad all the time. That's not what God wants, okay? Put that on my account. I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. Albeit, I do not say to thee, here's the warning. I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. Accept this Onesimus, because you, you know, you owe me as well, <laughs> okay? He's saying it in a different way, but don't forget, you know, I, the same way I brought you to Christ, we're bringing this guy to Christ. Let's not forget the balance here. For example, um, you don't want to forgive someone in your life, but what about the people you've wronged? Should you not be, don't you want to be forgiven for that? It's very easy to take the one side and get, you know, a higher nose and I'm so fantastic and, you know, you're so evil. We can't be doing that as Christians. Don't forget that we owe to the sins we have done. Okay, let's remember that. So the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Written from Rome to Philemon. That's why it's called uh, Philemon. Now, what is, um, who's writing the letter? Dionysius, the servant. He has let the guy write the letter. He has given him responsibility, Onesimus. Onesimus, write this letter. Why? Because two things. Some people say Paul's eyesight was going. That's not the reason. Because Paul says, I've written it with my own hand. He wants Onesimus to see it. Onesimus might have delivered the letter without realizing the letter was about him. Take this, Onesimus. Everything's okay now. I remember my father and I used to argue pretty much most of our lives. <laughs> Except for the last year of his life. We were great then. But he did something to me. And I remembered the Bible. I said, Dad, it never happened. Don't worry about it. Later on, a few weeks later, I did something bad to my father. And I said to him, Dad, I'm sorry it goes to me. It never happened. He remembered what I said. And how it feels. 
We've got to learn to do that as well. It's a big ask. Now, who's seen this? Anyone seen this? You've seen this film. And you know it's a true story. I recommend every single Christian watch this. You will never, ever believe, even says at the beginning of the film, you will never believe that this actually happened. What is it? Well, this is a true story of a pastor who wouldn't give up on some gang members. Turns out, spoiler alert, because I'm going to spoil what's going to happen. This gang member, the most dangerous one out of the whole gang, the most lunatic one, the one who had knives, hence switchblade, okay, he comes to Christ. What does he do? The same thing that happened with Onesimus. He gives him the responsibility to collect the money in the church. And everyone in the church is looking like this. Have you gone nuts, Pastor? Have you gone completely insane? You're asking gang members. What did the gang members do? You will not believe what happens. Watch the film. The gang members collect all the money and give it to him. And this guy breaks down. He converts them. The gang, the most lethal gang, come to Christ. Why? He gave them some responsibility. It's like in a church. If you had uh, somebody in a church and, and you gave them a task to do in the church, and they're going, you allow that person into your church. You let them do the Bibles. You let them do the... If you do that, that person feels special. They feel part of the church. When they're building the church, we've done the, uh, part of Nehemiah and stuff like that before, but what happened is when the people were building the church, God wanted them to do it, not professional builders. People were actually involved. Whatever it was, decorating, bringing wood, whatever it was, they felt part of the church. And it makes a huge difference. If it happened here, if it happens in the Bible, people, people don't. The pastor here never had any doubt that it works. This guy, because that pastor died, he's, he, he got on. It wasn't an accident or anything. He, he, he just got old, David Wilkerson. You've heard of David Wilkerson, right? Yeah, a few nods there. This is, uh, this is how he became famous. So this guy still preaches and talks in the church, the gang member. I'm telling you that you can make someone, people really feel like they've messed up their lives. Make them feel special. Okay? Make them feel as if they can do something. They're not complete losers. And you see the change in their lives. Like he did with Anissimus. Very clever, Paul. Very wise what he did. But what think ye, Jesus says? Who's he speaking to? scribes and Pharisees. He's desperately trying to teach scribes and Pharisees what's what, so that they can teach people. What think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. Go and collect fruit. Go and reap the fruit in my vineyard. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to uh, bring fruits of repentance first, our own fruits, then get other people to change as well. This is our job. This story is aimed at us as well as them, as is most of the Bible. He answered and said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. Afterward he repented and went. Now, we go to the other son. Remember, he has two sons. Okay. He came to the other son and said, likewise, and he said, I go, sir, and went not. Whither are them, whither are them twain did the will of his father? They said to him, the first. Jesus said to him, verily I say to you, that the publicans, tax collectors, and the harlots go into the kingdom of heaven before you. 
why? Why would publicans and harlots go into the kingdom of heaven first? Firstly, let's concentrate on the two sons. Okay? If you repent and then go and do the work, you're doing the will of his father. You're doing the will of your father. If you've led a terrible life, and we need to tell people this, if you've led a terrible life but you repent now and go and do the work, You've done the will of your father. Better than the other person who said, I'm going to go, sir. Yeah, I'm going to be a Christian. I'm going to live my life as a Christian. And then becomes a cult leader. Or he goes and starts treating his wife badly. Or he goes and does these things. You said you were going to go, but you went not. Therefore, you don't deserve to be in the vineyard and you don't deserve the fruit. For John came to you in the way of righteousness. Why the harlots and the publicans going in? You believed him not. The, but the pub, publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when you had seen it, repented not. Afterward, that you might believe him. You are the second son, he's saying. You guys had the training. As a scribe and a Pharisee, you're brought up knowing all this stuff, right? You know the law. You know what God wants. But you didn't go and do it. You wanted a bit of power. You wanted some money. You wanted some control. You didn't do the work in the vineyard. You never gathered fruit. Okay? Publican. What was Matthew's profession when he was called Levi? Tax collector, right? Publican. All Jesus had to say to him was, come follow me. And he, he, he went like that. Forget this tax collecting rubbish. I'm not doing it anymore. Let the Romans do it themselves. I'm going to follow Jesus. Who deserves to go to heaven? Him. Matthew deserves to be in heaven. Okay. Mary Magdalene was what? A prostitute. A harlot. Right? Does she deserve to go to heaven? Or do the people that crucified Jesus deserve to go? Definitely not them even though uh, Peter gave them a chance to, if they repented. Publicans and harlots. I'll take whoever does the first, what the first son did. These people said they wouldn't follow God, but then they went and followed him. They did the work of the first son. More important. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures? Because you're supposed to have read the scriptures, guys. Not you. He's talking to the scribes and Pharisees. Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? You guys are going to reject me. But then a new church will begin. The same will become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. Okay? Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing the fruits thereof, the people that did want to do the work. I don't care if they didn't want to do the work at the beginning. I don't care if someone has spent their life as a druggie or whatever. I don't care. Now, now, today, repent and do the work. And you'll be counted as the first son. And this is how it is. Okay? He also says, as a warning to them, <laughs> whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. There are people that will try and stop this church, this head of the corner, this Christianity. Real churches, real people, real word of God. But they'll be ground to powder. You see, nobody can really stop the word of God. This church has been attacked many times. We're fine, right? Even though it's pouring down with rain, I expected no one here. And look, 
You can't stop this. You cannot, cannot stop the word of God. They'll try. Uh, I think Stephen's coming in now. Uh, tell him to bring his bike in. He doesn't have to leave it in the rain. He, he gets embarrassed, the poor guy. Uh, and when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spoke of them. Now you've got two choices when you hear the truth. You know, Mario, you need to lose weight. Ah. Or I can repent and do something about it. What choice do you think they made here? Let's have a look. Yeah. <laughs> they went for option B. No, it's okay. We'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll stick with being the second son. You know, we'll just go to hell and stuff like that. Honestly, I, I cannot with these guys. You see, who's dressed like important people? I picked this picture for a reason. Who's dressed importantly? These guys. We are. We are the guys. We're the gang. You know, we're... No, you're not. The people standing with Jesus are plain. They're harlots. They're people. They're tax collectors. They're, they're, they're people... At the beginning of the passage, I didn't put it all in because of time constraints, but you see that a lot of people came to listen to Jesus that day. Many changed. Now for the scribes and Pharisees, at Jesus' um, trial, I mean, how can you try the Son of God? I mean, honestly, I, but anyway, at his trial, it was split 50-50. Half the Pharisees loved Jesus. Half of them wanted him dead. It was one deciding vote from the head priest that cast it. I think he was called Caiaphas. Was it Caiaphas, the head priest, whatever it was? Okay. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude. Why? Because they took him for a prophet. You scaredy cat people, how dare you exist? You would have done something to Jesus if you could. For me, this sickens me. The fact that he told them and, that, and everyone perceived he was a prophet except who? These guys. It, 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 it's like that sometimes. You see, how can I say it? When you go and speak to someone, you won't know the good that you've done. Maybe you will never know the good you've done. Maybe you spoke to someone and they went to Germany, went back to Africa, went back to England. You don't know the good that you have done. You will see it afterwards. How do you know they didn't repent and come back to God afterwards? Because of your words. It doesn't matter. You did your job as a, as a person that plants the seed. Okay? Now, we said this last week, but I never explained it. More shame on me. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repented. Okay? Again, a certain man had two sons. Okay? Now, if all you've done in your life is get one person to repent, you've done your job. What, just one, Mario? Well, go for two or three if you can. Let me tell you something about doing good. You'll get hungry for it. You'll be hungry to do more good. That felt good, helping that poor person. It tastes nice. I want to do it again. That makes me feel good. Okay. Now, notice this, the younger of them. Okay? Your younger brother, your younger sister. I know my son's cute, but let's focus on the word of God. He's <laughs> Is he gulping the milk down there? Okay. He's well behaved in church, love. Okay. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided to them his living. Notice how it says living. It denotes his life. The father has given you life. Okay. What are you going to do with the living that, that your father has given you? Okay. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and then 
wasted his substance, his life, with riotous living. So God's given you a life and you've wasted it with riotous living. Now I lived that life and there was no reward from it. So I can tell you now, stick to the narrow path. Because this one yielded no rewards. In fact, it was probably the exact opposite. You get nothing out of it. Let me tell you something. When I go with these big shots, we were going and, and they were buying champagne. Give me champagne this and champagne that. Let me tell you something about champagne. It's sparkling wine. It's fizzy wine. That's all it is. Hello, Stephen. You're right. You're very welcome to keep your bike in here if you need to, okay? All right. So, again, uh, the right is living. This is what, this is us and the way we choose to live our life, okay? And when what had happened? When you've spent all. Some people become very old before they want to repent. And do the first work of, of, of the older son or the first son. Jesus gives the same example. Okay, When you've spent all, sometimes when you've got nothing, that's when you find God. Let me tell you, you don't find God when you're buying these 150-pound bottles of champagne and 300-pound champagne. When you've drunk that, it tastes no different to the one in the shop for three euro. I know... I trained people in wine, okay? Writer's living does nothing except waste your money. Absolutely nothing, okay? There arose a mighty famine in that land, and it began to be in one. That's when you think. This is the best thing that could have happened to in this famine. Sometimes it's the best thing that can happen to you. A famine. Oh, I, uh, uh, I'm not good looking anymore. I, I can't meet anyone. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown away... You know, that great relationship I was in. You know, maybe I should have spent less money on that ridiculous champagne that people were laughing at me after I bought it. And, you know, th these are the types of things. You remember you wasted your life. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. What a great friend. I'm really going to help you. What I want you to do is feed these pigs. That's not your friend, right? Is that someone you want to be joined to? If you had a friend, would you get him a be better job than this? You'd do everything you could, right? But that's what, pe that's what happens. So to snap someone out of it, sometimes people need to lose everything. And you need to be, you need to see your friends for what they really are. I know my friends, and I've got many of them, and that's not a lie. I see people in this church. I see Raya who comes here early, even though it's her birthday. I see the girls that do the singing, that help out. I see you guys. I see my real friends in England who stood by my side when I was ill. I see lots of things like this. But sometimes it takes something for you to see that. Okay. Now, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave to him. Wait a minute. All this money you spent on your friends, and they gave you nothing in return. Were they your friends? And when he came to himself, notice his father didn't chase after him. He has to see things for himself. Sometimes you can't reach out to someone. They just have to wake up by themselves. He said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. It takes a lot to wake someone up. What's that sad story we heard yesterday about 40 years he hasn't spoken to his sister? 44 years. Because the husband doesn't want him talking, her talking to her family. 
I was sitting there thinking, uh, you know, please come to yourself. We need, we're going to pray for her to come to herself. Get rid of that idiot. I will do what? I will arise. I will arise. People need to find that for themselves. I will get up by myself. This is what God wants. Not to force you to do the right thing. But if Christianity is forced, it's not, a, it's not Christianity. Did you know that Herod was actually forced to convert to Judaism? It was a terrible thing. I was going to do it in one of the sermons. Maybe I'll do it next week. But it shows the tribes and stuff that he came from. Okay? I will arise and go to my father. People need to arise and come back to their father. Fantastic example by Jesus. And we'll say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. This is what people need to say. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Just give me a job. I know I messed up. Have you ever had someone say that to you? I know I've messed up. I've had people say that to me. I know I've messed up. Some of them went back and did the first work. Some of them didn't. It's just, it's not rolling the dice. It's just people need to get up by themselves. They need to see it. If a woman's with an abusive husband or pastor or, or she's with an abusive job, they need to see it. They need to see it for themselves. They need to rise up for themselves. There's only so much you can explain to someone. Their eyes have to open by themselves. And it's a terrible thing when people make that wrong decision. He arose. He makes the right decision. The prodigal son, we all know this story. But he arose. He got up. Now, if you're the other son or the father, you've been working this field, you're probably cursing the guy every day. I've been doing all the grapes. I've been collecting. I've been doing everything myself. And you was out there wasting your life. How many Christians out there are doing the work of God now? And some guy just comes along and goes, yeah, I'll repent. It's one of those things where, are they really repentant? But they expect, if you're really repentant, you expect your father to be angry with you. God, uh, I don't know what to do. I've realized I've messed up. This is God's attitude. And they came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, a great way off. If someone's trying to repent, Sometimes they're a long, long way off. I've given up the uh, drinking. All I've got left is the drugs, the, you know, the, <laughs> the heroin, the, 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 all these things, the gambling. Sometimes they're a long way off, right? They haven't changed completely. It's not a snap thing. It takes a while sometimes. For some people, it takes a while. But while they're a long way off, God has compassion. Look at this person trying to change. I like this. I like the freedom to be able to come back to God. The fact that he's there with open arms like this. And it doesn't matter how off, far off you are. Hopefully someone listening to this, you know, feels that repentant thing in their life. Okay? Know that this is, when Jesus is telling you this, he's telling you how God's attitude will be to those that turn around. Now, But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe, put it on him, bring a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. For this is my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. They began to be merry. I began to be merry when I came to Jesus. Wasn't you merry before? Not really, not like this. I was never truly happy. You could have uh, five girlfriends. 
It wouldn't be as good as one decent one. You could have, you could be earning, I had three jobs once. I just had loads of money on me. But what was I spending the money on? Nothing ever felt as good as giving that guy a sandwich, that homeless guy a sandwich. Really, Mario? You Didn't you buy something nice and something this, and didn't you have three cars at one stage? Yeah, I did. Nothing felt as good as, remember that guy who needed a car? Nothing felt as good as letting him see his mum because he needed a car. Weird. Very, very weird. It seems like the rewards of heaven make you merry, whereas the rewards of this world don't seem to, to fill the gap. They always look like they do. Now, I sat there, I was reading about this boat that costs one billion. Do you remember it came to Limassol, that guy's boat? And everyone was driving down to Limassol just to see this boat. But I thought, say you own it. So what? But it's got two helicopters and two yachts inside it. And how many poor people has he helped? What have you done with your riotous living? You were dead. <laughs> You're dead. You've wasted your life with riotous living. People think that the story doesn't apply to me. Yes, it does. Remember what you do with your life. Okay, we could all do more for God. Now, his elder son was in the field. <laughs> and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. He said to him, my brother is come, and my father has killed the fatty calf because he has received him safe and sound. Okay. And the answer he said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Okay. Neither transgress thy at any time thy commandment. Good. Good for you. You didn't waste your life. And yet, thou never gave me a kid that I might make marry with my friends. But as soon as thy son came, which has devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatty calf. Now what's bigger, a kid or a calf? You've, yeah, you've never given me the small, <laughs> the small thing, but you gave him the big thing. He doesn't see it. You never wasted your life. You see, when, 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 when you come to your senses, like this guy came to his senses, you think to yourself, why did I waste all those years? Why did I waste my life doing those things? Nearly going deaf in a club. There were speakers. I mean, you can listen to music, right? I worked in a place called Ministry of Sound in England. Very famous place. It has its own productions and stuff like this. Speakers this big that you would go deaf. What's the point in going deaf? What did you gain? What did you earn? What did you learn? Nothing. Better to have not lived that life. This guy thinks he wasted his life doing the right thing. He didn't. He gained his life. And he said to them, Son, thou art ever with me. If you're with God, you haven't wasted your life, have you? It hasn't gone down the toilet. You haven't done anything wrong. Do you think that guy had a good time in the famine with the swine? Or did this guy who was living righteous have a better time? And all that I have is thine. It was me that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Now, it is me. We said last week that the worst thing for a parent to hear is their children arguing. Okay? It's got to rip their hearts out. It really does. We are God's children, no? We're God's children. But we're not happy when one of them comes back to God. 
this is a very difficult for, thing for me because I've been wronged many, many times. Many bad things have happened to me. And in my life, in my heart, I want to see those people punished. I want to see justice. But what, would, what does God want the most? It was me to make merry. God wants, you see, we don't realize that we're all God's children. And God made all of us. And like we don't like to see our own children arguing, neither does he. He doesn't want to see somebody treating you badly. He doesn't want to see his child having to suffer. God's not willing that any perish. He doesn't want people to go to hell. It's their choice. I hear these atheists. Why would a righteous God send people to hell? That's exactly what a righteous God would do. <laughs> Don't they think? <laughs> it's a choice about people's lives. It's a very difficult choice to make for some people. Not for us. Hopefully not for us. Many people believe that they cannot fall afterwards. Or they believe that they're living righteous and call themselves Christians. But they want to do bad things to other people. It's, it's a situation where we should be happy when people repent. Pray for our enemies that they repent, not burn in hell. Because your reward would be greater than you've saved someone, you've pulled someone out of the fire. I looked at many times in the Bible, and sometimes God was punishing, like at Sodom and Gomorrah. They deserve to be so much punished, but Lot never said, good, I'm glad this is happening to them. Lot said, not so, Lord, not so. Abraham said, please, let me find some righteous people there. Not so, please don't destroy these people, God. That's our attitude. That's how it should be. The perfect Christian is this. It's someone who doesn't want to see their enemies burn in hell. He wants to see their enemies repent. Mario, it's too much. You're crossing the line. You're asking too much, Mario. I've done it. If I can do it, any of you could do it. I prayed for my enemy. My worst enemy. I prayed for the people that I hate around the world. Those that turn against God those that run cults, those that do these things. I've prayed that they repent. And we're going to do that here. I saw somebody, the worst, most hated thing for me is a man that does something to a woman, puts his hands on a woman. That really, really gets to me. But I had to visit a man in prison who had done that. He desperately wanted to see me. I had to drive down to the prison. Waste my petrol money on a guy who, but he wanted to repent. Imagine standing opposite a guy that you hate <laughs> inside you, a man that has uh, attacked a woman, and that this, it, it was uh, it was one of those things that shook me. I think that was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do, ever, for me to sit opposite a guy, and he wanted me to give him my own personal Bible, not the one that I gave him. For some reason, my one, because I was a pastor, meant more to him. I don't know why. But hopefully he's changed. You know, I never saw the guy. I think he was deported or something. Anyway, we'll go to the next one. Okay. So, as we come to the end now, oh, thank you for bearing with me. We're going to do the impossible today. We're going to pray for the people that have wronged us, that they do the impossible themselves and repent, okay? We, God knows their works, but there is an open door, okay? These people will always have a chance to get up and change in your life. You want to be the perfect Christian? Leave that door open. When you see repentance, 
in someone. Genuine, genuinely repent. Don't make it too difficult. The father in the story did not make it difficult. He didn't say, right, give me 300 push-ups and then I'll let you back in the house and work as a servant for five years. No, he treated him like royalty. When somebody repents, do the same thing. Okay? So, for those listening, thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully this will change your attitude towards your enemies. Don't worry about that. Uh, give place, the Bible says. Give place for God uh, to do wrath. If you pull out a gun and, 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 and you know end someone's life, have you given place for God? No. Give a place, give a space for God to bring justice down on those people. But don't want it. You pray that that person gets pulled out of the fire. So let's do that now. My Heavenly Father, blessed be your mighty name. Lord, I pray that you forgive our sins. I pray that we learn to forgive other people's sins. But most of all, Lord, I pray that our enemies repent so that they're saved from hell. I pray that they confess their sins before all people. I pray that their lives change. I pray that as Christians, our heart changes towards our enemies, that we don't hate them, that we give place for you to act. Lord, we know that you see all things. Make us better Christians, better servants for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please contact us. <laughs>